Welcome back still to come. Trini is sharing more of her top beauty tips and tricks, and she gives one lucky viewer a gorgeous makeover. And if you'd like some advice about a health concern, Dr. Philippa is here to help. She'll be answering your questions in about 15 minutes' time. But before all of that, he's one of the world's biggest classical artists, performing to millions of concert goers around the globe and even outselling Beyonce. And now you can see musical superstar Andre Ria in action as he brings his incredible live shows to the UK. <laughs> Well, the King of Balls, Andre Rio, joins us now, and it is lovely, as always, to have you here. And you look at that, and the size, and the colour, and the splendour, and it's huge, and it's so popular. But in 1987, when this began, how many of you were in the orchestra at the time? 87, that's a long time ago, I think 12. Yeah. Yeah, now we are 70. It's insane, isn't it? And you say you have a, you've got your small family and you've got your big family. Yes, exactly. I have my family, my wife, my two sons and my grandkids, and I have my big family travelling the world together. And some of whom have been with you for 25 years. Uh, longer. Really? Longer. And I have in the orchestra 11 couples. So they met in the orchestra, married and have children. So wow. that's my next orchestra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're growing an orchestra. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that. But <laughs> so you are coming to the UK and Ireland from April to June. You'll be here. And, yeah. I mean, you can see there what it's like for anybody that hasn't been or experienced one of your concerts. What can they expect? I think I'm so proud of it when you go to a classical concert. You look at the program, who's coming, who's playing, which yeah. symphony. In my case, they don't know and I don't tell them. They only know when you go to Andre and his orchestra, you will have an evening you will never forget. Mm -hmm. and, and that is why we travel the world. We, I want to touch the hearts of the people. And you want to change the perception of classical music? Uh, it's, not, it's not like a mission, you know? I'm not traveling the world I want to change, but it's, uh, it's the result. It's a byproduct. Yes, what, of, it's the result of, the of how we do for example, I, I will tell you a little secret about this program now. We have a gospel choir, and uh, there's Happy Day as last piece, mm. and, uh, really. And then, immediately after that, we play uh, Verdi's Carol Norma. It's a world-famous, beautiful, classical aria. Nobody would program these two pieces Together, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> after each other, but I love it. Your, um, your father was a conductor, yeah. and you went to watch him as a child, and really that's where this whole thing was born, this passion, this love. Um, but it was very different. What you were watching then was very uh, different to what you were doing now. He didn't like what I did. Did what he I do. No, he was... I, I educated you for the classical music, not ah. to play waltzes or whatever. He, he couldn't see that... The music is not only this, but it's mm. white. It's, mm -hmm. So I only play music that touches my heart. And that's not only classical music or pop music. It's all music, but it must touch my mm -hmm. heart. And I know when it touches my heart, it will touch your heart. Yeah. Mm. And, um, and I, I love the fact it's one of those perfect circles that, uh, that as a child, you'd go to a, a castle for your music lessons and it was cold and it was dark and it was damp and you didn't like your music teacher, and there were no really great memories in that place. So what did you do? Bought it, moved it. I in. bought a castle, and I renovated it, <laughs> and now I live in it. And now it's a place of joy and, and, and music that you love. Yes, but I still don't like to play the piano because of that teacher. Yeah, really? <laughs> no, therefore, I played the violin because yeah. my first violin teacher, she was an 18-year-old blonde girl. Right. And okay. I fell in love with her. Oh, I was you five see. years yes. old. You were five years old. With, um, with, the, with the violin, I mean, choosing your instrument and 
I mean, your violin is incredibly special. Yeah. Um, would you just tell us a little bit about it? Yes, I have a Stradivari, uh -huh. and it's my third Stradivari now. Not that I own them all three, but I started with um, a, from it's, it was his second violin when he made. He was 22 years old. It was still very small, mm -hmm. and I sold it now. Uh, some Korean girl with small fingers is playing on it, and now I have a, a later one from 1692. Very beautiful 1692. sound. How much? Yeah. The, God, I, I think. I mean, it's quite scary to go away with a piece of expensive luggage, but but taking a Stradivarius yeah. to the to the around the world, to yes, the multitude but I'm used of countries. To it. The, yeah, yeah. So I stand, I dance with it, and it never felt. I'm, 73 years old now I play since my fifth year and it never felt so you think of the music that's been played on that violin and it's oh it's incredible it's such a every day I take the violin it's so special because the whole history who yeah. played on it what music was played on it so do you I know who owned yeah. it is there a, like a lineage like a like a pedigree yeah yeah you can see, you can see not the whole it. history but uh, very often you can see who owned it yeah yeah it's mad to think that with all your success and how brilliantly the whole thing is done, that at one point you almost stepped away and opened a pizzeria. That's true. That's when um, I was always studying my violin and Marjorie, my wife, was always studying at university. And we both had a very severe education. Uh -huh. And so we wanted, to get, we wanted to get rid of the whole studying thing the violin in a cupboard and the key away and Marjorie the same. And then I want this, um, so we did our puberty in three weeks, but we did it. So that was important. I had one earring here and Marjorie the other <laughs> earring there. And we went to a, a shop in, in Holland and uh, the lady said, what can I do for you ladies? <laughs> she saw that. Oh, no. no, but that was important that we did it. And, um, we wanted to open a pizzeria, and the most expensive pizza would be Pizza Paganini. So I, oh, then I have to practice. So <laughs> I secretly took the violin, I practiced, and then... Well, because you'd said that if anyone who ordered the yeah. Paganini pizza, you would come out I would come out Paganini. and play Paganini. Yeah. And I, oh, yeah, but then I have to practice again. So I and took then, the violin that's... and the pizzeria, yeah. but... Yeah. Fell in love with it again. Um, for uh, for for you, um, Strauss has always been your your hero. Your yeah, idol. yeah. What do you think? Because I know you say your dad didn't like what you do. <laughs> um, what do you think Strauss would have thought? I hope he's proud of me. I hope so. Uh, at least I play his music all over the world. So, mm -hmm. and I I play it seriously. I mean, with that. I was in an orchestra myself, and the conductor said, uh, we have five minutes left, let's do the Strauss Waltz. And that made me so angry, because it's very difficult to play. Together with 100 people, play as one. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult. You have to practice that, so not like five minutes. Yeah, you've got to give it time. For it to breathe. You, um, something that many people may not know about you, I mean, as, as being a skillful musician, but you're also a very talented baker. I am. I know, we've got some pictures <laughs> of the cakes. No, uh, due to, to the pandemic. Uh, look at what? that! Yeah. I mean, that's not an ordinary cake. You don't do things by halves, do you? Oh my it's God. Work yeah, I have all the photos, yeah. <laughs> That and was you, for the grandchildren, was that man. That looks amazing. And yeah. you, do you bake for the orchestra as well? I, I did one. Perhaps you have the photo. I made a cocombouche. It's, you know, a very tall thing. I made that for the orchestra when I was, when I had my birthday. <laughs> there is no end to your talents, is there? Um, you are on tour, as I said at the very beginning of this, 13th of April to the 24th of June, and that's in UK and Ireland, and all the dates will be there. Thank you. It's lovely to see you. Do you know what's great? You didn't swear this time. Uh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you tried me to because you spoke about my teacher at the piano. <laughs> I, I didn't do it. The last well. time you were on, you made the made all the papers back home. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. There we go. Uh, thank you. Thank so you nice very much. See you. Thank you. Still to come, if you have a health concern that's worrying you, Dr. Philippa will be here right after this break.